what's impressive or surprising is that uh, DeepSeek has gotten to the frontier, but I think there's a common misconception still that they are above and beyond the frontier. Mm -hmm. And and I don't think that's right. I think they just waited and then were able to take advantage of all the efficiency gains that everyone else was also seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, like they're exactly on the sort of cost curve that you'd expect, which yeah. is not going to take away from the fact that they're like brilliant engineers and like right. brilliant researchers who yeah. like I look at it, I look at their work and I'm like ah like the kindred soul there right. in, in the in the work they're doing. <laughs> yeah, um, and to go from like way behind the frontier to like oh this frontier. is like a real player like, is, is super incredible. Yeah, work. yeah. yeah. yeah incredible. Okay, so people say that they have good research taste. Yeah. Looking at their re papers, what makes you say that? Yeah. Um, I think their research taste is good in a way that I think like Noam's research taste is good. Mm. Uh, Noam Brown? Noam, uh, Noam Shazia. Okay. Um, Noam Brown also has good research yeah. taste, but <laughs> <laughs> Noam Shazia, where they very clearly understand this uh, dance between the hardware systems that you're like designing the models around mm. and the uh, sort of like algorithmic uh, yeah. the side of it. Mm. Um, and this is manifest in the way that the models give this sense of like being being like perfectly designed up to their constraints. Mm. Um, and, and you can like really very clearly see what constraints they're thinking about as they're like iteratively solving these problems. And so, I mean, let's take the base transformer and like diff that to deep seek V2 and V3. Um, you can see them running up against uh, the memory bandwidth bottleneck in attention. Yeah. Um, and you can see them uh, initially, they do MLA to do this. Like they, they trade flops for memory bandwidth, basically. Um, and then they do this thing called NSA, where they like more selectively load uh, memory bandwidth. And you can see actually, like this is because the model that they trained uh, with MLA was on H800s. Uh, so it has a lot of flops. Mm. Um, and so they were, they were like, OK, we can freely use the flops. But then uh, the export controls uh, so from like from, uh, Biden came in, uh, or like you know, they had less of, they knew they would have less of those chips going forward, um, and so they they traded off to like a more memory bandwidth uh, oriented like algorithmic solution there. Mm -hmm. um, and you see a similar thing with their approach to sparsity, where they're like iteratively working out the best way to do this over mul multiple papers. Um, and the part that I like is that it's simple, a, a big failure mode uh, that a lot of ML researchers have is like you do these like overly complicated things that don't like think hard enough about the hardware systems that you have in mind. Um, whereas the deep the first deep seek like sparsity MOE solution, uh, they design these like rack and like like ch like node level uh, load balancing mm. losses. So you can see them being like, okay, like we have to like perfectly balance it on this, and then they actually come up with a much better solution later on where they don't have to have the auxiliary loss. Um, uh, where they, they just have these like bias terms that they put in, mm. um, and it's isn't cool. that less simple? Like you're manually putting in a bias rather than having but, the model but balancing or zero loss is annoying. Um, like you're you're making the model like trade off uh, this thing, and like you have to. With auxiliary losses, you have to like control the coefficient and the mm -hmm. weighting. Um, the bias is like cleaner in some respects. Interesting. Um, did they, did they have to change it through training? Uh, they did have to change it during training. Does, I think. Is, is that does all training involve? Um, Continuously, like fucking with these values as you're going through it. Uh, it depends on what your architecture is, um, but like I, I thought it was like I just just thought it was cute that like you can see them running up into like this very hardware level constraint. Yeah. Like try like go like what do we what do we wish we could express algorithmically? What can we express under mm. our constraints? And like iteratively solving to like get better constraints and doing this in a really like simple and elegant way, and then like backing it up with great engineering. Uh, I also thought it was interesting that they uh, incorporated the multi-token prediction thing from Meta. Um, so Meta had a nice paper on this multi-token prediction thing. Uh, and actually, like, I don't know if it's good or bad, but like, Meta didn't include it in Llama, uh, but DeepSea did include it in their paper, uh, which I think is interesting. Uh, like, yeah. yeah. Was that because they were like faster at, at iterating and including in the algorithm, or did Meta decide that actually like it wasn't a good algorithmic change at scale? I don't know. Mm. Yeah. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks. <laughs>